this warmth and uh, all this dry air through the first of next week. Thereafter, we will see a change, and we'll see the 70s, 75, 76 degrees for more than one day next week. I'll outline your forecast, tell you when that change is going to arrive, and other details to follow in just a few moments. I couldn't think, oh, let me ask you this. If I were to ask you, where would I go today, it being the first day of fall, to try to take in as much color and fun as possible? Well, yes, that's exactly where I spent much of my afternoon. I'll bring you that delightful report in our first top story in just a few seconds. Other headlines tonight will include an update on testimony and uh, that was given and who testified today in the case of Painesville Mayor Bob Porter, an earthquake in eastern Kentucky and a whole lot happening on our calendar and other news I'll try to work into the first or what's left of the half hour. My apologies. But, yeah, I woke up today uh, early earlier than usual even, and thought first day of fall, beautiful day out, and I couldn't think of a more appropriate, colorful, fun, exciting, even educational place to be uh, on the first day of fall than at the White Oak Pumpkin Patch as they are now celebrating their fifth year. It's where kids of all ages, and I mean all ages, that covers me and you too, have been coming from counties all over Kentucky where they've been climbing and swinging and learning, having classic fun down in the farm for five years. Five years since the old fields. Ashley and John converted the family farm into a full-fledged fall tourist attraction. I told Ashley I couldn't help but understand what a sense of pride that she must have looking back on what they've done in just a mere five years and creating such a fun and albeit magical place out of basically nothing but a whole lot of creativity and hard work. I think this year I did a lot of reflection on how we started and how it's grown and um, you know, like I've said before, we never anticipated for this to be a success. We're so thankful. We feel so blessed because it's allowed me to mother my child and still make a living and um, make something out of the dirt, which I just think is great. And as much work as it is and has to be, Ashley says that she never takes for granted that wonderful feeling of seeing a bunch of kids pile off a bus for the morning or afternoon. We love children. We're thrilled to see them coming. Um, we're tickled to death that we're getting new counties uh, a little farther away each year. And uh, it's just great to teach them about the animals and agriculture. And uh, I think ag is sort of making a comeback, so to speak. I think we need to get our youth involved. We, um, we work with a lot of the high school kids, middle school kids. Um, they come out, they volunteer. We have some actually working. And a lot of them didn't, you know, they weren't raised on a farm. So they're getting and gaining that perspective of um, good, honest, hard work. And some are there to have fun, a whole lot of fun. A whole lot of fun, doing a whole lot of things at the pumpkin patch, the corn shoot, the corn maze. The soybean maze. I mean, the list goes on. And the sights, the shades of autumn and fall, all the colors, the creativity, it's all just endless. And did I mention fun? Does anybody know what's going on this time of year? Any, any, yes! Any, okay, any big exciting things? Fall! 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 Okay, fall. What else? It's turning October, okay. and it's almost trick or treat. Trick or treat? Yeah. Okay, fall. what else? It's What's fun about the Sorghum Festival? Candy! Yay! Candy! And my new kindergarten friends from Miss Hoskins and Miss Shelley's classes at Morgan Central also confirmed that pop guns, getting your Christmas ornaments, and oh yeah, candy are all a must if you're headed to the Sorghum Festival this weekend. And if you are, you've got to stop by the Wide Oak Pumpkin Patch. Even if you just left, because odds are you're going to find something different. Definitely everything autumn and local. And Ashley tells me they're already looking ahead to next year and beyond. They've got plans for a restaurant, for real restrooms as well, and some other big things to happen at the Pumpkin Patch. And also, weddings are now available to be booked at the Pumpkin Patch. Their wedding season pretty much March through August. They can't really host weddings September and October because of, well, all the big crowds. But then they pick it back up in November for a short time before the end of the year and winter. And from there... I asked Ashley one more question. I thought, you know, over five years, there's had to be some fun or interesting stories to have happened that maybe she could share with us. And and this was a good one. I've got lots of mishaps that happened. Okay. Um, we can talk about TV? Well, yeah, I guess. Uh, so one morning, 
I take my son to school and I have just enough time to drop him off, stop in town, do what I gotta do, and then get back here in time for the buses. So everybody else has already been here working for an hour or so before I even get here. So one very cold October morning last year, I pulled in and all of my little workers ran out front. They were so upset, just absolutely freaking out. And uh, I was like, what's wrong? You know, what's, what's happened now? And apparently all the cattle got out the night before and they came in the barn and they ate all the pumpkins, they ate all the fodder shocks, they ate the candy, they used the bathroom everywhere, and God loved their hearts. They had worked for like two hours trying to get it cleaned up before I got here. And uh, we had a huge load of kids coming, like 250 kids, and we got it all whipped into shape. And I knew then that I had some really good employees. So. And, a really good store. and a really bad gate. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, if you talk to a lot of people who've been here over the years, they'll say, oh yeah, I was there when the pony was out, or when the pig got loose, or the cattle were in the corn maze. So, you know, we've got a lot going on, and sometimes our animals do get out, but we promptly get them back in. And some, you just don't have to worry about getting out too awfully much. The only thing I've got left to worry about right now is a special invitation to stop by you know where before fall is over. I'm gonna count to three on my fingers, and when I see, when you see three, I want everybody to say, welcome to the pumpkin patch. Real big and loud, ready? One. They've also got a fundraiser. That was so cute. They've also got a fundraiser with the Relay for Life coming up, I think, on the 1st of October. We'll talk about that in a few days to come and some other uh, things of the season happening as well, and we'll let you know when they are. But uh, just to let you know now, Pumpkin Patch is open and ready for business. I'll be right back. For high-speed internet starting at 15 meg for all of your gaming, movie, home, and business solutions, or to watch TV, including your favorite local channels, without a contract, with hundreds of channels, and digital and HD quality, and to stay connected 24-7 with friends and family, a direct line to 911, or to give your business the link it needs, choose telephone service you know is always there. Just click on their link on this site to find out how affordable the latest technology and communications can be. Foothills Communications. I believe court just recessing this afternoon, just a few moments ago possibly. We did have someone in London earlier today uh, keeping up with testimony given in the Paintsville, uh, the trial of Paintsville Mayor Bob Porter, and I'll have that for one of our final reports in just a few moments. So while we're waiting on that information and those details, uh, let me tell you about an earthquake that indeed might not have been felt by anyone here in the viewing area, but certainly was by those in Pike County, and it actually was... Um, a quake that the epicenter was located about five miles south of Pikeville, right around 9 o'clock this morning. Precisely at 8.57, to be specific, says the U.S. Geological Service. That's a small earthquake, mind you. 2.3 on the Richter scale, but it was felt by those, especially near the epicenter, which was in Virgie, near Robinson Creek. We'll pull in on the map that the U.S. Geological Service supplied there, and you can see a bit closer as to where it originated. So considered to be a small earthquake, it was felt by a lot of folks in that area, but not necessarily a great deal farther. In fact, when I went to the U.S. Geological uh, Service website to find more about it. They had the all the earthquakes listed for the past 24 hours, uh, but those listed only started at 2.5 on the Richter scale and higher. So we had to do a little digging to find out more about the Pikeville quake. There were actually 31 quakes in the past 24 hour period. Uh, Puerto Rico, Redwood Valley, California, uh, parts of Oklahoma as well, and all of those anywhere from 2.9 to 2.3 in the Richter scale. So the one in Pikeville certainly considered to be small and even smaller than those which were reported as well. But nevertheless, the most recent, uh, not such a rare rarity, of earthquakes in eastern Kentucky. Going on over to your McGoffin Farm Bureau community calendar, I've got a birthday wish. It says, happy belated birthday wishes tonight. Go out to siblings Ray Marshall and Bethel Cousineau from all in the family and from a host of friends as well. Happy birthday. A happy belated birthday wish, it says, to Ray and Bethel. Happy birthday.
This next announcement twofold. First, that the Magoffa County Farmers Market will be closed tomorrow, but they'll be closed in preparation of their fall festival on Saturday, 10 to 2, on West Maple Street in Sagersville. All the local produce that you can imagine and that you come to expect and find, baked goods, fall decor, free pumpkin painting kids and adults too. Saturday, 10 to 2, their fall festival. It promises to be a big day with more than ever at your McGoffin Farmer's Market. Flu shots will be available at the McGoffin County Health Department. Well, they actually are as of today and throughout the rest of the season. You can come in and no appointment necessary, but you can also make an appointment if you like. But Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday till 3, till 5 o'clock on Tuesday, until 1 on Fridays at your McGoffin County Health Department. Get your flu shot, everyone. Get vaccinated against the flu. The best way you can prepare yourself and shots are available at the McGoffin County Health Department. A quick reminder, revival ongoing nightly at 7 at the Sagersville Pentecostal Church of Christ. They'll wrap it up on Saturday evening, and they'll have their 33rd annual homecoming and old-fashioned day Sunday with anointed hearts and the Sons family and a big dinner following services. And it's also going to be a good day to be on the water and be in support of your McGoffin County High School dance team. They've got a bass tournament on Paintsville Lake this Saturday. They'll blast off at 7. You can register that morning after 6 or call Philip Eastep at 349-6085. 50 bucks per boat, big cash prizes, and free hot dogs and drinks during the weigh-in. Kearney Free Will Baptist Church invites you to take their Fall Fellowship ATV ride this Saturday. They will leave at 10, register at 9 at South McGoffin Elementary, 20 bucks per ATV. That's with two riders and $10 for every additional rider thereafter. Kids 12 and under get in free. They'll provide lunch and snacks on the trail and a picnic lunch at Elkview at the picnic shelter. About a four-and-a-half-hour ride. Bring, bring your camera. Dress appropriately, which means it's going to be warm. <laughs> Keep that in mind. That's this Saturday at 10 at South McGoffin. And it's always one of the biggest weekends around here. The North McGoffin Volunteer Fire Department also having their annual hog grow soup bean dinner and auction all starting at noon all this Saturday at the top of the improvement Rock House Hill. And a class reunion for the class of 06 at the McGoffin County High School Saturday evening at 7 at the Ramada in Paintsville. $25 per classmate. If you have any questions, call Katrina Bailey, 496-6399. And for birthdays, anniversaries, and calendar announcements, call me. All you have to do is tell us, get it to us any way you can, and we'll tell everyone about it. Turning to funeral service announcements provided by the McGoffin County Funeral Home, Sandy Conley has passed away. Sandra Arnett Conley, 77, of Dixie, passed away yesterday, the daughter of the late Raymond and Peggy Arnett. She's also survived by her son, Michael Conley, and daughter, Marcia Conley. Graveside services will be held this Sunday at 2 at the Arnett Cemetery in Sagersville. The McGoffin County Funeral Home is in charge of arrangements, once again in honor of 77-year-old Sandy Conley. Today was the second day of testimony in the trial of Paintsville Mayor Bob Porter, a trial slated to take eight days. Today there was testimony given by a son of Euless Crace, one of the former co-defendants, but still one charged uh, in the investigation, as well as some other individuals, including former employees with the uh, city of Paintsville, I believe, as well as the FBI. I know we've already covered it, but in the case, of course, it was originally three co-defendants, Mayor Bob Porter, former utilities manager Larry Harold, and Euless Crace, businessman in Paintsville. Crace and Harold both uh, severed from the case. Harold has, of course, we know, already reached a plea agreement and come to those terms with the federal government. Uh, there's no word on he or Crace testifying in this trial that we are aware of. Just some testimony real quickly that I can go over this evening and we'll have more at a later time. We do know that some of the first people to come to the stand today uh, was, first of all, we know that Euless Crace's son, Chet Crace, took the stand uh, when he was questioned by the federal government that if he worked in any business in Paintsville, he took the Fifth Amendment. He was questioned as to whether or not he worked at Crace's record service to which he took the Fifth Amendment. After that, when the government asked, is that going to be your response to any and all questions, he said yes. Uh, they excused him as he indicated that he would plead the Fifth Amendment to all questions presented to him by the federal government. There was a city police officer, a former city police officer, called to the stand, Darwin Marcellet, who testified that he believed to have been fired or let go from his position at that time after he refused to follow orders and not stop or arrest certain individuals, as was directed by the mayor. 
Former and current council members were also questioned about Porter's use of a Cadillac Escalade uh, and the utility bills, the water bills. The Escalade, along with the Ford Explorer, had been confiscated in drug cases from the Paintsville Police Department. Uh, the government alleging that Porter used those for his own personal use and benefit. At issue was also a bill from Euless Crace's uh, record service for storage of that Escalade for three months. Crace charged the city some $5,400. Several witnesses were questioned regarding the $7,000 in utility bills uh, that ran without payment for three years, that being water bills and sewer that were charged to Porter two residences but never paid. Eric Ratliff, who replaced former utility manager Larry Harold, had reportedly forgiven at least one of the property utility bills on Porter's property, which his daughter had resided in. He, too, took the stand earlier today. He testified about the uh, bills, which were outstanding. Uh, he was also on the stand answering numerous other questions. One line of questioning later centered around some excavation work, a contract that was done uh, by the city in dealing with a dirt slide. That was also questions that were directed towards Eric Ratliff in that there was an excavation of a slip at the water plant or in that area, and there were two different bills submitted, $19,000, $19,500 for removing the slip, but another $15,000 to haul off that earth from the slip uh, when it should have been a project, one project he testified or was presumed by the government, over $20,000, which should have been let out to bid but was not, instead broken up into two different projects in order to get it under that $20,000 threshold. The last bit of testimony that we have to report from today was from one witness who testified that Euless Grace had reportedly told at least some members of the city council that if they allowed the mayor to continue to drive the Cadillac Escalade that was seized by the police department, he would forgive the $5,000 storage bill that was referred to in earlier testimony. But if they sold that vehicle to purchase equipment before, for the police department, he would expect his $5,000 storage bill to be paid prompting a witness to respond that it sounded like extortion to him. Testimony resumes at 9.30 in the morning, and then, of course, it will resume unless there is something unforeseen happening tomorrow, Monday of next week. Once again, the trial is slated to last up to possibly eight days at the federal courthouse in London. And wrapping it up for tonight, a summer forecast into the first days of fall. No big surprises, only a few minor tweaks and the 90s for much of your weekend. We've got a cold front that rolls into town early next week, but very little precipitation with it, only knocking temperatures down closer to where they should be. As for tonight, 58 for the nighttime low. Look for more of that patchy, dense fog after 3 a.m., mostly clear skies. Tomorrow, up into the upper 80s, we'll climb after that fog is burned off by a lot of sunshine, mostly clear skies, 88 to 60 on your Friday. Yes, Saturday looking after a little fog in the morning, completely sunny and completely hot, 90 and 60, a 30-degree swing for daytime highs, nighttime lows, partly cloudy skies at night at the most and very near to, maybe even hitting the 90-degree mark again on your Sunday. 88, mostly sunny, partly cloudy, and pretty much ditto, well, exactly ditto for your Monday. You will notice the only difference being a 20% chance of some showers. That is late, late, late Monday night, early Tuesday morning, and it's a very slight chance of some showers. And in fact, as that cold front rolls through, pretty weak in nature it is, we will see only a 20% chance of showers Monday Tuesday, and maybe into the very early hours of Wednesday, but not much precipitation, if any, seen with this front. Temperatures, however, will be more affected. 88 Sunday, Monday, down to 79 on your Tuesday. Wednesday and Thursday of next week, 76, still sunny and dry. And that's going to do it for tonight. We're going to be hard-pressed to get all the news that we already have into tomorrow night's program before we wrap it up for another week here at Your News Today. So be sure and find out what's happening and see how we pull it off. We'll see you back here tomorrow night. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday evening.